The seed of an idea to benefit small-scale artisanal miners in East Africa was born at GIA headquarters in Carlsbad about two and a half years ago. This idea would be carried out through a modest educational project whose goal it would be to provide a gemological tool rooted in education that miners in distant communities across East Africa could use immediately to better assess quality and value of the gems they are mining. South African icon Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Economists believe that Africa's tremendous resources, both physical and human, its growing education, expertise, infrastructure, and technology are converging to unlock potential that has remained dormant for centuries. Many Africans maintain the expectation that the 21st century will finally be the African century. And while a lot has changed in its favor, much more remains to be done. For small-scale miners in distant and desolate mining communities stretched across East Africa, this is especially true. Gem sources and alluvial finds are reported throughout the region of the Mozambique Belt, a massive geologic orogeny that occurred almost 3,000 million years ago. Today, small mines bearing witness to this geology are dotted across vast East African grasslands and in the shadow of the towering Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Meru. These now extinct volcanoes are remnants of that tumultuous geologic past. This geologic phenomenon gave rise to many of East Africa's unique and valuable colored gemstone materials, from Mozambique through Tanzania and Kenya to Ethiopia and Somalia. Nonetheless, human involvement with the gems of Kenya and Tanzania scarcely dates back over half a century. With the discoveries of Savarite and Tanzanite in the late 1960s. These gems are unique to Africa. To date, they aren't found anywhere else on earth in commercial quantities. And since those initial discoveries, an incredible variety of gems has been uncovered. Rubies, sapphires, emeralds, color change garnets, crystal barrels, multiple colors of zoocyte, and other rare garnets, to mention but a few. Small-scale artisanal miners extract most of the East African gemstones that reach consuming markets. But those miners often do not receive a proportionate share from the benefits of their labors. At the heart of this is a lack of education in remote areas. Even basic reading or writing, or where even rudimentary gemological skills at the source would provide a basic understanding of value among the gem varieties. This need dovetails with GIA's mission. Fundamental beliefs that education and basic gemological concepts helps level the playing field. This remains key to the wholesale and retail sector, where a gemological understanding provides transparency in a profession where secrets and knowledge are the recipes to leverage value and asking prices. But artisanal miners in East Africa who toil daily in arduous conditions and with rudimentary tools provide these East African gems with little knowledge of their worth. GIA formed a team to start work on a project to create an artisanal rough gem guide of East African gemstones, its first attempt at educating miners in the field. Funds for the project were earmarked from the GIA Endowment Fund. In due course, GIA partnered with a mining arm of PACT, a Washington DC-based non-governmental organization and began work with PACT's Cristina Viegas. With PACT's guidance, a group of East African women gem miners working in remote areas near Tanga, Tanzania, were chosen to be the first recipients of the booklet. PACT knew the area and these women well. These miners would form the core group for a pilot study to see if the gem guide would actually be useful in the field. The Tanzanian government, specifically the Ministry of Mines, was duly informed of the intended project and they in turn voiced enthusiasm for the idea. The GIA team set to work designing a book that would be richly illustrated, rainproof, and resilient under heavy use in the field. It photographed some 20 collections of East African gem rough samples and illustrated numerous ways in which this rough can be examined for value and ultimately what happens to gem rough 
entering the market in consuming countries. The vision was for the booklets to provide easy to understand concepts. The booklet's limited text was translated into Swahili. The team also manufactured a small translucent plastic tray together with numerous illustrated concepts for how miners could assess gym value through visual observations in reflected and transmitted lighting conditions. The pilot program was officially kicked off in Tonga in early January 2017. GIA and PACT members first met in Dar es Salaam, where PACT has a regional office, to discuss plans for the rollout. They also met with officials from the Ministry of Mines, who were presented with numerous copies of the booklet and accompanying trays for their records. Then the trip by four-wheel drive began, a six-hour journey along paved roads to the coastal town of Tonga, which would serve as a base. From there, the GIA and PAC team journeyed for a two-and-a-half-hour bone-jostling ride along dirt roads into the rural northeastern region of Tanzania towards Kalalani. It is a truly beautiful Tanzanian landscape consisting of savanna, acacia trees and scrub brush, which unfolded as we traveled for seemingly never-ending miles, flowering trees, past tiny bustling agricultural villages, the picturesque Usambara Mountains, towards ever more rural conditions. Under a decade ago, lions, hyena, giraffes, African Cape buffalo, and other magnificent African wildlife freely roamed this area. The discovery of gem mines and the accompanying human settlement has caused much of the wildlife to recede. The ladies and a few gentlemen miners arrived for their booklet presentation, dressed in their finest, brightest clothing. Since few of the miners spoke English, a GIA alumnus contracted by GIA, who is fluent in Swahili, provided simultaneous translations. The booklet's main features were discussed at length, and pictures of various forms of rough material were viewed. A second day seminar brought the miners and the GIA PAC teams together again. This time, the lessons were practical in nature. The miner ladies had brought in samples of the rough they had mined, and together with the GIA experts and translators, samples were reviewed in the trays by small groups of ladies. Concepts of both reflected and transmitted light conditions, or immersed in water, and using a flashlight were clearly shown and explained in Swahili. GIA even showed that in lieu of a flashlight, a small mirror could be used to reflect sunlight on the rough to study external features, or transmitted through the material to view color zoning, pleochroism, the location of cracks in the rough, or inclusions. Understanding these factors, and particularly how they affect value of rough, were discussed. A third and fourth day in Tonga included a tour of several of the women's mines. The drive from Tonga brought us deeper into the African bush, and our excitement was accentuated by two flat tires and the collapse of the four-wheel drive's air conditioning system. Visiting the mines was also a learning experience for the GIA and PACT team, as it provided a witness view to the rudimentary mining conditions at several mines highlighting not only East Africa's enormous gem potential, but also its challenges in equal measure. Extracting material from the earth and from alluvial sources poses unique challenges for small-scale miners throughout Africa. But what was revealed in four days of visiting with the women's group was the enormous enthusiasm which even a tiny bit of education and a few tools can bring. It is but a small first step. Over the next few months, several similar mining groups will be identified, and the rough gym guide and trays and seminars will be brought to them. If, at the end of a trial period, the project is considered successful, a strategy to expand and enhance this kind of education at the source will be considered.